Okay, so I just, you know, I've been uh, keeping track of what's going on in Ukraine. Um, just wanted to put out a little uh, video on my thoughts, you know, on what's going on, mostly for uh, future reference, just to see, uh, have a record of what my thoughts were on this. Uh, but anybody who's interested, of course, is welcome to watch. But because uh, I'm not saying anything here, I wouldn't say in public. So essentially, uh, looks like it, to me, it, you know, we've been surprised so much by this war. And first of all, how long it's lasted, how uh, ferociously the Ukrainians have uh, put up a defense. Uh, there's nothing um, wrong with the, well, up until recently, I would say, there has been uh, very little uh, negative to say about the state of uh, morale in uh, the Ukrainian military, generally speaking. Uh, but, you know, <clears throat> Uh, the leadership has left much to be desired, and that's really been um, the reason Ukraine has uh, been uh, suffering so bad in this war. It has to do with leadership. Those of us who understand military history understand that leadership is one of the most essential elements to a successful military operation. Um, we've seen men in the whole notion, which I've, I've, uh, said time and time again, that, uh, advanced weaponry, uh, is going to be the most decisive factor in a military operation. It can be a factor, but for it to be a decisive fact, uh, a factor that could turn the tables of war is ahistorical and nonsensical. Okay. There have been plenty of situations in which very uh, technologically, uh, pre, uh, you know, uh, undeveloped uh, armies have defeated more technologically advanced armies. Uh, there's been situations where manpower was extremely skewed. Uh, but what has always been in military history the most decisive factor from the Battle of Zama to uh, Ramsey's conquests to Alexander the Great, they didn't call him the Great for Ed for no reason. Okay, it can be. What's amazing about history is in many ways human affairs are quite predictable. Human beings behave very predictably in, situ in certain situations and human aggregates more so. Uh, however, despite all of this, wow, that's a loud ass car in Florida. We're here in Florida today. It's a uh, Saturday night, it's beautiful now. It's hot today. It's only late February and uh, everybody's complaining about the heat, but back to what I was saying. So leadership, has been one of those factors in military history that could turn the tide of almost any military operation despite the situation at the time. And that has always been the case. And secondly is morale. So Ukraine's military had good morale, whether that morale was because they were being threatened in their you know, in their hometowns, whether they had been propagandized to such a degree. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a combination of both. I think there's a combination of terror tactics used in Ukraine and very sophisticated propaganda. After all, the president himself and the whole uh, guy behind this uh, situation was a TV actor supported by an oligarch, an Israeli oligarch. Uh, we know that... Um, um, the origin of some of these uh, Nazi paramilitary gang sort of groups have been from that oligarch specifically who used them as his own <laughs> private uh, enforcers. So that was the level of corruption going on in Ukraine. And the thing about military history, it teaches us one important fact that and that is that very corrupt countries have a hard time. Uh, dealing with military matters uh, when matched with a competent opponent. Uh, and regardless of what you say about Russia, 
uh, and their leadership in their military. One thing is for sure is they have, because of the Cold War and the time, the World War II, they have a very deep uh, military uh, culture and uh, history. And uh, they are competent. They, whether you think the United States would be able to beat them, which I doubt, in a, if we were to invade there, go to Ukraine, I doubt we could beat them there. Obama himself said so. So don't, don't get mad at me. Obama said Russia has escalatory dominance in Ukraine. And I quote. But whenever, back to this thing with leadership, whenever a corrupt country tries to go against a, a competent opponent, usually they don't do too well. And that's because corrupt countries uh, don't have good leadership, generally speaking, okay? Uh, you know, you can look at um, the Nazi regime. Were they corrupt? Well, it depends on how you define corrupt, but not in this sense. We don't have, the Nazi regime was actually very strict and orderly, which is how they achieved the gross crimes against humanity that they achieved. However, uh, so to call them corrupt, where I don't think so. Uh, there weren't people stealing money, embezzling money everywhere, laundering money everywhere. It just wasn't happening as far as I know. I mean, there may have been isolated instances, but with, so they were, they had more competent leadership and that's why they were able to, for a time, prosecute the war more effectively. Uh, they also had other factors that were on their side. And then later on, they lost a lot of the leadership. That's why they lost the war. Well, that's one reason historians cite uh, a big reason why the Soviets were able to turn the tide so dramatically really is because uh, the uh, German army and the, the German military uh, was running out of good officers. And that was especially important with tank warfare. And you had to have experienced tank crews. So this dispels the whole myth about, you know, uh, Ukraine could get a couple hundred tanks and they're going to turn the tide of the war. That's a ridiculous assertion made by people who are historically illiterate. Okay, so you have a corrupt country. They don't tend to have good leadership. Guess who else is a corrupt country? And guess who else doesn't have good leadership? Uh, yours truly, the United States of America. Okay, it's unfortunate to say. I only say that because I love this country. And I remember this country when it had better leadership, at least, you know, in the last 30 years, 40 years. I mean, I would say the Clinton era, while that's where it was starting to fall apart, even the Clinton era, uh, beats pretty much everything that's come since then, okay? So, we have uh, Ukraine with this poor leadership, and not only is their home leadership, their, their uh, leadership in Ukraine itself, from Ukraine itself, bad, but they're being advised uh, and pretty much manipulated by military intelligence officials, well, not usually civilian intelligence officials and civilian leaders. And let's just say this. Uh, the military, I mean, uh, civilian intelligence agencies don't have a good record when uh, fighting uh, wars. Uh, even uh, very uh, small wars they couldn't win all over the world. Okay, so that's another problem is Ukraine's leadership is not only hampered by its own homegrown corruption, but also from corruption and bad leadership coming from the United States and Great Britain primarily. And then Germany would be third in that list. So the leadership is the problem. And we see examples of why this is a problem. The fact that Ukraine has had chances time and time again to withdraw in untenable positions and preserve forces, okay, for a later fight, okay, that is... <clears throat> an example of a very poor strategic uh, 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 planning right there. Uh, it's beyond planning. These people are madmen. They're, they're, they're absolute madmen. Who, who's ever, in, I'm, I'm suspecting it's not really the military officers that are making these choices. That's just my suspicion. Okay, so um, Sierra Donetsk was one example of that. And now we see Bakhmut, which may be the ultimate example of it, where they are just losing a ridiculous amount of men. It's really sad, it's really callous, and I'm really upset with Americans for not paying more attention to this and not being as outraged about this as I am. But this is just crazy. So these 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 sorts of decisions show that they must have terrible leadership 
Uh, I'm sure there's good military officers there. I bet you most of the um, name Zaluzhny himself is, has has um, you know public. I don't know about publicly, but there's been rumors that privately he has been outspoken about this uh, mistake. Okay, and they're doing it again, and and they did it in Mariupol. Uh, which, who cares, because that was mostly Nazis that died there, so who gives a fuck, really? But uh, then you have, um, uh, I don't know, if there's, a, if there's some spooks to see this, some spook Nazis, they're going to be upset when I said that. But it's true, and most people in Europe feel that way. Uh, it, it, so they've been doing that. Um, uh, in Mariupol, now Bakhmut. Um, so this is just, this is the real problem is the leadership, the poor strategy, uh, poor, no planning whatsoever. And that goes for all parties involved, uh, besides maybe Russia. Uh, I think Russia probably gamed this out pretty well. And I don't think the United States really gamed this out. They kind of stopped at, oh, you know, we're going to impose sanctions on them and that's going to destroy Russia, which this shows just that not only are they militarily uh, illiterate in terms of military history they're historically illiterate and economically illiterate okay so this is the problem so what's going on now is looks like Bakhmut is in the process of being uh slowly encircled and it's pretty close but like you know you, you can't people are stopping making calls on these battles right now on especially Bakhmut because people have you know people on either side have expected Bakhmut to end uh, way sooner than this. Uh, and everybody's been wrong. It's lasted a long, a very long time. And Ukrainians appear to be, uh, in it to the bitter end on this one. And it is just sad to think a lot of these people that are dying in Bakhmut, they're, they're getting dragged out of their homes forcibly to join the military, probably given no training whatsoever, if any, maybe a week and sent to the front. So it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I don't really feel bad. You know, I do and I don't. It's it's unfortunate that there are dupes from America. Well, not all of them are dupes. Some of them are just sociopaths who want to go over there and kill people for money or somehow grift off of this war. But a lot of people really believe the propaganda here in the United States. And they're going over there. And I, I think this is going to have, we're going to have significant American casualties, like maybe a thousand when I say significant, before this is said and done, before this whole war is said and done. So I think it's going to be, well, I would say actually more, maybe even more, maybe even more uh, between the contractors, the covert people and the volunteers. Uh, you know, a lot of them are being sent straight to the front. Um, we're going to have at least a thousand deaths, uh, in a, I think, well, I'm going to make that call right now. I think there's going to be about a thousand deaths, uh, in America, uh, of American, per, uh, uh, citizens in combat in Ukraine, something like that. So it's a big disaster. I predicted from the start, as I said, time and time again, I predicted that no, if the United States gets involved, I have to look at the video. I'm it just don't, it's going back to like December of 2021. I was saying if America gets really involved in this, and I didn't even understand the level of American involvement at the time. Uh, I said, this is going to be an absolute diplomatic disaster for America. And it is, it's going to be so disastrous. In fact, that I think it's going to really start, it's going to have noticeable impact to the average citizen. The consequences of this, the average citizen will notice this, the consequences, and they'll know that it was from this shindig. So from this unscru and this unscrupulously poorly, uh, planned, uh, military adventure now i don't know if that's an actual phrase i just said there but anyway so that's about it, it looks like bakhmut's going to get encircled and finally i wanted to go point into what i think is going to happen in the future now defense politics asia made a point that i really liked which was that um that um you know there's plenty of defensible positions behind the line of contact right now and for the ukrainians and they are they'll they'll be able to fall back and this war is not going to be over with bakhmut unfortunately for all parties um it's going to go on because they have defensive positions prepared uh but they're you know they're actually what 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 ukraine is doing 
by holding these positions like that is they're actually shortening their ability to stay alive in this war. They're shortening the amount of time they have to pull something off. Uh, and I always said from the beginning, they just, they just should have taken the Japanese approach. Okay, the Japanese approach was dig in everywhere and just wear them out. Okay, if they even come close to the homeland, just dig in, sacrifice everybody, and wear them out. Now, the Japanese had a certain culture which made that possible, but the Ukrainians could have done something like that and dragged this war out until the political situation uh, in uh, Russia started to suffer and if it lasted long enough and they were they were better at inflicting casualties on the Russians apparently the Russians have uh, I would I mean according to BBC they did an in-depth investigation and they could only find 14,000 casualties and I think the number is probably something more like 25,000 casualties but they can't hide the casualties there's no way Russia could if they were having massive casualties as Alexander Mercurius more eloquently than I said in his video, I believe from today, there's no practical way if they were having massive 200,000 casualties, there's no practical way they would be able to hide that from their population or from us. It is not a closed society. Even Soviet Union, when it was at its most fucking uh, closed nature, couldn't have hid something like that from the United States. Okay, so... You know, and if there were such high casualties, at least the intelligence agencies would know and they would leak it to the press. Why wouldn't they? Okay, so this is just, you know, this is just the whole fantasy, as Alexander Mercurius calls it, of the Ukrainians uh, somehow, of the Russians somehow hiding 200,000 casualties from the world is, is, is not even worth even talking about anymore it's such a dumb idea again the reason people believe this shit is because they don't understand basic things about how government works they don't know basic things about history they don't know basic things about military history and this is how people believe this stuff it comes from ignorance it comes from the fact that the american population has been completely dumbed down dumbed down by the mass media here where most americans they don't know anything about history because their education after after grade school and college, high school, consists of sitting in front of the TV and drooling all over themselves. And almost nothing on there on TV is educational material, unfortunately. Uh, History Channel was better back in the day. Now it sucks, pretty much. It's really bad, okay? So, and then movies. Movies, there has, I have yet to see one movie. There's only been a handful of movies that were popular about history that were actually accurate, like stuff like... Like uh, Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List were very accurate. Saving Private Ryan was actually uh, impressive. Uh, some of the historical tidbits it had in there, uh, but you know, you this this most movies are completely ridiculous. I mean, Apocalypto is one that a lot of people talk about, which talks about the Mayans, and it has ridiculous historical accuracies. Just that just gives the 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 audience a whole the whole the the incorrect per perception of of the actual situation at the time that that movie was supposed to have taken place. So that's you know I saw that on another on another guy he does movie comparisons of history and he does a really good job uh, if I knew his name I would put it here so you know this is uh, in uh, what did I talk about I talked about uh, yeah so in the future the future situation of this uh, of this. Uh, war is it's gonna it's gonna last a lot longer but at this point um it's going well it's going to last a fair bit longer a lot of people are saying summer and you know i don't know i everybody's been trying to put timetables on this war and i think uh for all intents and purposes that's a useless endeavor uh first of all it seems like the russians have been uh, intentionally uh just like being a bit uh unpredictable just to keep people guessing so the idea though that they're going to do big arrow offensives as many people have pointed out has have pointed out uh 
you know, is kind of a, I, I felt that way from the beginning, just from the, not from the beginning, for the last month or so, just from the fact that Russia's achieving its goals fighting what it's fighting now. They're doing massive casualties to the Ukrainians, okay, and that is their primary objective, to destroy the Ukrainian military, and that has been their primary objective from the start. So why would they go on an offensive when the Ukrainians are sending their troops up to die on the front anyway, and sending all their equipment, which is just as important from a military perspective, destroying the equipment is also very important. And then as Obama, Obama, so the Russians have proven Obama right. The Russians have proven that the, uh, the that um, they have escalatory dominance in Ukraine. And personally, I doubt even if the United States got directly involved uh, that would complicate matters for them and probably make it a much more serious uh, casualties for them. But I don't think it would change the ultimate end result of that. And it would be probably the end of the world besides that. I mean, if it came to nukes. So anyway, that is my uh, assessment of this uh, situation as we speak. And um, just remember, just about everything they've been telling you up to this point on television has been complete bullshit. Okay, as far as the mainstream media here in the U.S., the only person who speaks any truth of it all, and I'm not a huge fan of the guy, is Tucker Carlson. He's the only person that's been speaking any truth. So that's it. I am pretty much out.